So we know the weather's going to be great when Taylor Swift is here, but we're hoping to learn a little bit more about what to expect from her latest stop, which was in Denver. Oh, yeah. Steve Steger is joining us live right now, and he covered Taylor's tour stop there in Denver last weekend. Steve, thanks for being with us today. As you know, we are expecting a ton of people here in Seattle for this concert. So what did you guys see in Denver? It was, uh, do I call it swift ammonium, pandemonium? Is that really overblown? I don't want to use this song because we were hearing from so many Taylor Swift fans that the news needs to stop using song lyrics in your writing. So we're, we're not going to use a Taylor Swift song. But it was for a city that, you know, coming out of a pandemic may not have seen as many people in the last few years. Denver really was packed for this concert. And when you add on top of it, we had the Taylor Swift concert, 70 80,000 people over at Mile High Stadium, plus a Rockies game with about 50,000 people at Coors Field downtown was just absolutely busy. And it, it, the, the mood, though, you would think that so many people stacked on so many people would be kind of tough to handle, but everybody was happy throughout this entire concert stop. So it's going to be crazy. Be prepared for that. If your plans bring you downtown, be ready for big crowds, but be ready for big, happy crowds. <laughs> okay. Well, Steve, you, you kind of hit a good point. Here in Seattle for this upcoming weekend, we have a uh, Mariners-Blue Jays game uh, right next door to where this concert is going to be packed. Uh, the city of Seattle wants people to take public transportation like the Sounder, Trainer, Light Rail. Did Denver have any problems with uh, getting people to downtown Denver for this concert? <laughs> We didn't necessarily, I mean, if you ask certain people, they would say that there were problems because they saw massive crowds on transit platforms. And I, I actually, in the lead up to this concert, I talked to other transit agencies across the country that have dealt with what they call the swift boom uh, in transportation. Uh, what Denver saw was probably the busiest weekend we've seen on public transportation in this city ever. Um, they had to make some adjustments to service to kind of make it work. They ended some construction projects or halted them along the way just to try to improve service and bump it up. But the one thing that is nice about a concert like this, unlike a sporting event, is that it's everybody leaving all at once. And so you can kind of plan for it, unlike a sporting event where you have people kind of like sporadically leaving throughout the course of the game once their team is losing or you know, something or the, the game gets boring. A lot of people tend to leave the stadium. In this case, people <laughs> wait for that surprise song at the end of the uh, the set. Apparently, there's a surprise song. Okay. Uh, and they, they all just kind of leave right at the same time. And so our transit service, RTD, actually had extra service ready to go uh, so that they'd fill up a train and then have another train on the platform to try to get out of there as quickly as possible. You'll hear from people who will complain. People who don't usually ride public transit aren't used sure. to kind of the big crowds, but uh, they, they will love it and they will get there. For some reason, Taylor Swift fans love public transit. It's, it's, <laughs> they will make it there for sure. Yeah. Uh, Steve, you know, it can be overwhelming, but you said the crowd is having fun and they're friendly. And, uh, you know, I know that the bracelets are a big deal yeah. at the Taylor Swift concert. So I heard you got a few in Denver. I did. I, you, there was a point where just a bunch of people, I, I walked up with a camera and there was a line all of a sudden of Taylor Swift fans who were just handing out these friendship bracelets. And I was like, what, what is this? What is this thing? Uh, they, they just, they trade them apparently, but they just handed them to me. I brought a whole bunch of them back to the newsroom and handed them out. But it's, it's a kind of a cool part of their culture. That, that, that swift culture is everybody's really friendly and willing to share. Are you still wearing them today? Oh yeah. Well, I put them on. <laughs> They're on my desk. We'll put it that way. Love it. Thank you, Steve. Thanks so much for talking yeah. to us about the Denver experience. We'll let you know how Seattle goes.